Good morning from a very windy but very mild Scotland. Last night I stayed at the Wee Hoose Glamping, so I can now check glamping off my list. I'm going to check out shortly, so before I do, let's go up there and I'll give you a quick tour of the pod. There's an honesty shop in there and also I think this caravan is the office. There we go, it's what I had to do last night when I arrived. Had to call the number there and the owner came around and let me into my pod, which is this one right here. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun, side by side our fears are done. All the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright I am inside the glamping pod and looking out towards the car park and some of the nice hills that surround Wee Hoose Glamping. So, if I'm honest, I didn't stay here because of the glamping, I stayed here because it was the cheapest accommodation I could find in the area and it still cost £65 a night, so uh, pretty expensive, but considering the rest of the properties in the area, Tongue and Betty Hill and some of the others more inland, were costing like 90 plus pounds. I thought this was a, a good deal. So I booked it during lockdown, took a chance, and uh, it has paid off. So let me give you a quick tour of the glamping pod. So all the modern comms here, it's all safety related, fire action notices and fire extinguishers. It comes with a microwave, a fridge, here we go, had some breakfast, so the milk has gone, it's got some bread in there, some juice, even some bacon down there that I pre-ordered. The guy that owns it, nice guy, he left it in there for me. Over here, little table, excuse the mess, but that's kind of like a little dining table. There's my luggage, all of that, would you believe it, all of that will fit into this blue case when I travel home, because EasyJet only allow one case so all of that will have to fit in but yeah i've got my coat ready for the day i've got a few bits and pieces on charge there nice comfortable bed last night you can see by the way that the whole pod as you may have seen from the outside the roof arches over completely it goes right the way down but uh yeah bed very comfortable incredible view out here I didn't see any of it last night because I arrived in the dark, but there's some fields with some horses in. The guy that owns the pods, he actually said that you can go walking on his land. He owns acres and acres of land. As long as you don't disturb the wildlife and the horses and the chickens and all of that, I think. In here is the little shower room. So a little sink, shower at the end there. My goodness, that was tight in there last night when I had a shower, but all good. Decent shower, hot water. The uh, toilet is, uh, I think they call it a macerator system. So if I flush it, you can hear that noise. That's the macerator working, there we go. This is the kitchen area. You've got a camping stove that uh, is pretty easy to light actually. There we go, just ignite it in that respect. And uh, the fuel lock is currently, I'll turn that off because I haven't got any water in there at the moment, but the fuel lock is currently, I think, off. And then I think you should push it up to unlock, I guess. Uh, but it seems to work on fuel lock, so I don't know whether it's the, the other way around. Uh, sink, soap, you've got condiments up here. Coffee, tea bags, sugar, 
sources, plenty of plugs to charge your bits and pieces. I'm charging my battery pack at the moment. Down here there are loads of extra bits that you might want. Toaster, oh, I didn't see that earlier. <laughs> Cups, saucers, teapots, some cereals down there. The guy owns chickens so he, he left two free range eggs in there for me but I've only had cereal this morning so didn't need them. I am going to split today into two videos I think otherwise it just becomes so long. Uh, this video I'm going to be driving some of these crazy Scottish roads and um, here in the Highlands a lot of these roads are just single track with passing places. I've got to drive for about an hour today to get to my first destination but along the road I'm going to be hopefully seeing locks, brocks and uh, eventually ending up in the town of Tongue and I'm not sure if that's where the video will end but in a separate video today I'm going to be climbing to the summit of Scotland's most northerly Munro so if you're interested in hiking up the mountains here in Scotland here in the Highlands then join me for that one it's going to be a, a good adventure I think but Right now it is starting to rain again. I am going to just pack up the last bits of my belongings and then head off on the road. Stick with me and let's see what's out there. I met an old man. I said, tell me your story. He took out a note. Something for me Then he kept walking on down the road And I watched him disappear like smoke What a pretty river Very rocky Very shallow Fairly fast flowing though and this bridge is just amazing. So there is a sign here that says that the bridge is for use of fishermen only. So it says, private bridge for the use of river neighbor fishermen only. Persons using this bridge do so entirely at their own risk. Let's go and have a look. Oh man! Oh look, that one's broken. Look. Oh goodness. You don't want to be putting your weight there. Oh, that's it. So as uh, you saw on the sign there, this is the River Neva. And it is pretty wobbly. I'm at a young man. Wow, look at that. Welcome to Scotland. I took out an open and wrote in my story. So this is the car that's doing all the work for me. I may have said in another video, this is a, a duster. And I've got to say at the moment, it is driving really, really good. So in case you're wondering, it's a bit windy here, so excuse the wind. In case you're wondering what that is, that's a GoPro Hero 8 Black. I bought it just before I came on this trip. £279 on the GoPro website. That includes a free memory card. And I bought it because the quality is much better than my 5 that's about three or four years old now. And I was figuring that if it rains a lot up here, I'd have to switch to the GoPro to record a lot of my trip. This is a little safety mechanism that uh, I created myself. I bought some little straps and connected them together. Hopefully it doesn't fall off and if it does, I've got the bungees on there that will catch it. But that is my setup for this trip. You'll be 
Well, stopped again. An old stone bridge caught my eye. Going over a lock and a little looks like rowing boat, a fishing boat, just there on the shore. I mean, there is nobody around. Goodness knows who that belongs to. But it's a nice area. Just around here. This is the start of the Rob Don Trail. Rob Don Mackey, who lived during the 1700s. He was a Gaelic poet, and he left over 200 poems about life before the Highland Clearances. So this used to be a village or a settlement called Strathmore, but it was unfortunately part of the Highland Clearances that took place few hundred years ago and it is now just completely empty and void of any life at all apart from perhaps a few animals around the place look at the views up there again the clouds rolling pretty quickly across those mountains must be a lot of wind up there okay the highland clearances of course were brutal and a lot of this land that you're seeing here was cleared of people for the purpose of sheep farming because it was thought that sheep farming would make more money. This is definitely one of the most challenging roads that I've driven here in Scotland so far. It is really narrow in places with very few passing places, but the duster has done me proud. So I have arrived at Dundornigal. This is a brock. It's kind of a, an Iron Age building made of stone that dates back around about 2000 plus years old. It is in ruins now, most of it has collapsed. If you travel back a couple of thousand years, it would have looked like the cooling tower of a power station. So that kind of look. And it was built right here on the Strathmore River, I think this is. You can see just below me. And nobody knows for sure what they were actually built for. Two theories, one was defensive purposes, military purposes, and the other, was as a kind of residential building to show off and demonstrate somebody's wealth or a family's wealth and prestige. Some people, some historians believe that both could be true. There's the, the beautiful river here as it kinks around the corner. And what a view from the Brock. It's my first Scottish Brock. Okay, right, well, just up there, just up the road, you can see the road continues, this narrow winding road. Up there is Ben Hope, Scotland's most northerly Munro. And if you want to join me in hiking to the top, looks like there is cloud covering just at the summit at the moment, but hopefully it will clear when I get up there. It is about a five mile round trip to walk. It's going to take about five, six hours at least to get to the top and down again. But I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to try and get up there. So if you want to join me on that incredible journey, then check out my next video. I'm not going to include it on this one. Got to say, I'm very impressed. It is magical, the views around here. Incredible landscape, right. Let's hit that road. The NC500 awaits.
What a beautiful evening. I have just returned from Ben Hope. You'll have to watch the video to see if I made it all the way to the top. But I am now back on this little trail road. It is coming up to half past seven in the evening. When I got down from Ben Hope, suddenly I went to get in the car and I was talking to some people who were in the next van. I think they were setting up for the night. And suddenly all of these midges just came from nowhere and I jumped into the car and some made it into the car with me. So I was trying to fend them off for quite a while. This landscape is just awesome. I think up there is Ben Hope. You can see I'm still driving along this little winding narrow road and passing by this enormous lock. And this lock is called Lock Hope. And I think there is also a town of hope around here somewhere. bit of an abrupt end to the video here. I've made it to a place called Tongue and there's the hotel for the night, the Ben Loyal Hotel. What a day. Take this mask off. Oh it's hot enough already, it's not cold out I'll tell you that. It is, uh, it is another mild day, or it has been, here in Scotland. So this is the room, and uh, it is a basic room. As I said before, I'll bet there's a lot of guests here tonight paying nearly a hundred pounds. This is 55 pounds for me tonight. A bargain, I'd say, small room, but definitely will do the trick. Breakfast is booked for half past seven tomorrow morning. A little bit of storage space there. There's a kettle up there with a cup, a shower, and uh, another basic bathroom, but it looks good. So, I think I'm gonna call it a day. Thanks for watching today's video. Tomorrow is gonna be another good one, I can just feel it. I am going to be driving to Loch Inver via Dunness. I'll also be hiking to Scotland's most remote beach. So that should be good, looking forward to that. But uh, I've got some snacks in my bag, I'm gonna have them, have a shower, and then crash because I am exhausted. Thanks very much for watching the video, and I will see you tomorrow for more epic adventures along the NC500. Good night. Mm -hmm.